everybody, this is Jennifer with the Soapy Cauldron Shop. I'm really excited to be making this video for you today because back in October of 2019, I was able to be a part of the library's Comic-Con that they held and it was really fun. I was able to meet all of you and see all of you in your costumes. I absolutely had a blast that day. And then of course COVID happened and we weren't able to do it last year and I was pretty bummed about it until the library called me and told me that they wanted me to make this video for you so we could together virtually make Harry Potter inspired soap. So if you would like to do that with me, then don't stop watching. In order to make soap, you need two things. You need supplies and you need ingredients. In order to get them, you grab your wand and you say, Accio supplies. I love magic. All right, let's talk about some of the supplies that I have in front of me. The first thing that you're going to need is a digital kitchen scale. I got mine from Walmart, even though I like to pretend that I can do magic, I can't. I got mine from Walmart, and the reason that you need a digital kitchen scale is because making soap is a chemical process and you need to be very precise with your ingredients. So you wanna make sure you have something that's gonna measure them precisely. Well, the next thing that you're going to need is something to put those ingredients in. So I have this bowl that I bought at the Dollar Tree for a dollar, and this is what I'm going to put my oils in. And then I have this little container that actually used to hold cotton candy, but it comes with a lid and it's the perfect thing to put my lye and water solution in. So I have that also from the Dollar Tree. You're going to need, the next thing is two choices. You either want to have a stick blender like this, that I bought from Amazon, I believe, or you're gonna need a whisk. How patient are you is really the one that you wanna use. If you mix your oils and lye water together by hand with this, it's probably gonna take 10 to 15 minutes to make the soap process start. But if you use a stick blender, it's gonna take 10 to 15 seconds. So, up to you. The other thing that you're going to need once you have made soap is you're going to need a mold to pour it into. I got this one on Amazon. It is a three pound mold and I love it because the liner comes right out and it's super easy to clean. Another thing that you're gonna need is a spatula. Just because when you are working with your soap batter, you need to scrape out all that goodness just to make sure you get it all out. And the last thing you're gonna need, but probably the most important thing is safety protection. When you're making soap, you're going to be using lye, which is a very caustic substance, which means it can burn you. So make sure that you use proper protection. You wanna have gloves on at all times, and really you wanna wear long sleeves just in case the batter splashes you, it doesn't get on your skin. The other thing that you can use, of course, is goggles, or I use my glasses, just to make sure that I don't have anything splashing in my eyes. If you're under the age of 12, you're probably going to want to ask an adult to help you when it comes to the time that you need to add the lye and water together and also when you're making your soap batter, okay? Which brings me to our next thing we need and that is ingredients. So again, grab your wand and yell, Accio ingredients. Hi, got a little buried back there. Okay, let's talk about some of the things that you see on the table. For ingredients, we need oils and we need a lye water solution. So obviously we're gonna need lye. When you buy lye, the best place to get it is probably like Amazon or a craft store like wholesalesuppliesplus.com, Nurture Soap, or even Nature's Garden Candle Company. All of them sell lye. But the important thing to do is make sure that it's 100% lye and it's also sodium hydroxide flakes. You never wanna get lye in a liquid form, which is usually what you buy at um, Home Depot or Lowe's. So always get it in a flake. The next thing you need are oils, which is what you see here. I have several different kinds that I actually put in my soap. I use olive oil, I use coconut oil, cocoa butter, castor oil, and palm oil. Those are the five oils I put in mine. However, I'm gonna put on the screen right now Here's a list of oils that you can put in your soap. So depending on what you're trying to get out of your bar of soap is what you wanna put in your soap. So if you want something that makes your bar very moisturizing, you're going to want to use a shea butter or a coconut oil. And if you want your bar to be very hard, you'd wanna put more, say, cocoa butter or something that is an oil that is hard at room temperature that makes your bar a little bit harder. Me again. Now, the other thing that you might wanna put in your soap 
is you might want to put some fragrance oil in there. So here's one that I'm going to be using today. It's called Black Raspberry Vanilla, and it is from Nature's Garden Candles. When you're looking at fragrance oils, especially for soap, make sure that they have on there that they are safe for bath and body. And also, if you use a, a supplier like Nature's Garden or Wholesale Supplies Plus or even Nurture Soap, those fragrance oils have been tested in soap, so you know they're going to be good. So this is what's going to make your soap smell good. And the other thing you're going to want, if you want to make it really pretty, is you're going to want colorant. I use micas in mine. These two right here are from Nurture Soap. This one is called Orchid Purple, and this one is called High Society. So just a little bit of this will go really well in my soap. I use about a teaspoon of each in my soap, and it makes it nice and pretty. So let's get soap in. Okay, let's talk about what you're seeing in this bucket right here. This is my oils. In here, I measured out 36 ounces of various oils. So again, I use olive oil, coconut oil, palm oil, castor oil, and cocoa butter. What I did is I measured out 36 ounces and then I put it in the microwave for two to three minutes, stirring after every 30 seconds to make sure that all of my oils melted down into liquid form. And then what I did in this container is I poured 4.8 ounces of lye into a separate container and I measured 10.8 ounces of water into this container. And then I took both containers outside because when lye mixes with water, it makes very toxic fumes. So you wanna make sure you're somewhere where it's well ventilated. I took the lye and I poured it into the water Never ever pour your water into your lye. You always pour your lye into your water and then you stir it up. When you are mixing your lye water solution, please know that it gets extremely hot. So it's very important to put your lye water solution in something that will not melt and then also that's not going to burn your hands. What I like to do is once I've made it, I just kind of let it sit till both my oils and my lye water reach room temperature, about 74 to 75 degrees. That is now what I have done. So remember 36 ounces of oil, 4.8 ounces of lye into 10.8 ounces of water. And then to start the soap process, you're going to pour your lye water into your oils slowly. The reason that you do it slowly is number one, so it doesn't splash, and number two, so you don't make bubbles in your soap. You want bubbles when you bathe, not air bubbles in your soap. So we're gonna pour all of this in here, and then we're gonna set this off to the side. I'm gonna stir it up just to make sure it all is incorporated, and then again, you can use your whisk if you want to, but I like to do things much quicker and I'm going to use my stick blender. So I'm putting my stick blender into my bucket of oils and then you will be able to watch on screen the soap process start. All right, so as you can see, it went from yellow oils to now a very nice, creamy soap batter. And now we are ready to begin the soap process. Okay, the soap that I am making today is going to be based off of Polyjuice Potion. And if you've ever watched the movie or read the book, it doesn't smell good, nor does it look good. But I like to make my Harry Potter inspired soaps pretty. So I'm actually gonna take half of the batter and put it in one container and half of the batter in the other container. So now I have split my batter into two. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the mica that I showed you earlier and pour a teaspoon of each color in here. So in this one, I'm going to be adding that High Society from Nurture Soap. Again, about a teaspoon. And into this one, I'm going to be adding that Orchid Purple again from Nurture Soap and about a teaspoon. Now because I like to save time, I have my fragrance oil already mixed right here. This is that black raspberry vanilla. I'm gonna pour half in this one 
and then again half in this one. And now we're going to stick blend separately each color and pour it into our mold. Starting with the purple. So now we have a nice, really pretty lilac purple. And then we're gonna take the same stick blender, not even clean it off, and put it into our green and stick blend that. All right, our purple looks good. Again, we're gonna take that spatula and make sure we have all of the color and the fragrance oil incorporated. So scrape down the sides, scrape off your spatula, and then do the same for your other color. And now that your colors have mixed up and your fragrance oil is in, it is time to pour it into your mold. The pattern that I'm going to do for you today is called a drop swirl. So I'm going to pour all of the purple into our mold. And then I'm gonna leave whatever's left because I'm going to make a pretty decoration on the top. So I have about that much left in there. I'm just gonna set it off to the side. And then what I'm gonna do with the green is I'm going to come high up in the air and pour the green into the mold to where it drops into the purple and makes a really pretty swirl. So just be careful when you're doing this and you can go all the way around. Okay, again, I'm going to leave about that much because I am going to texture and make the top really pretty. But before we do that, I've noticed that I have some bubbles in here that I wanna get out. The easiest way to do that is to tap it or also tap it on the tape. All right, now it's pretty much done until it firms up a little bit and I can come back and pour the rest of these colors on the top to texture it. Okay, with my purple and my spatula, I'm going to scoop on the top, some of this purple all over. No rhyme or reason. Again, we are going to put some texture on here, so it really doesn't matter. But you wanna make sure you scrape it all out because anything left over is going to turn into soap in your bucket. And you want all the soap that you can get. So then we have that, and now I'm gonna come back with the green, put that on top, like this. And with that spoon that we use to do our mica, I'm gonna take the end of it and just kind of swirl it on the top just so those colors have a little bit more depth and dimension all on the top. All right, we have now made our soap. It's in our molds and unfortunately, now we have to wait 18 to 24 hours until we can take it out and cut it. So, obviously I don't want you to have to sit for 18 to 24 hours, so I'll be back in three, two, one. Ta-da! Here is our soap. It is nice and firm. And now we are going to take it out of the mold. The way that I do this is I stand it up like this. And then I just peel back the sides, make sure they're not stuck. And then I peel back the top. Just peel it right back. And then I peel all the way down the bottom. And that is it. Now, in order to cut your soap into bars, I actually use a cheese cutter, but you really can just use a knife and cut it, especially if it's soft enough. 
shouldn't bother you at all. I cut mine into about 10 slices and two on the end. I always cut off a little bit just to make like um, some samples, but then also too, like sometimes the ends when I peel back the mold, sometimes they get a little funky. So I always cut those off. But if you're using just um, a cutting board and a knife that works just fine, just make sure you measure out and put like little nicks in the side of your bar. That way you have them nice and uniformly cut. But for me, I just use this. I love it. It just goes straight through the bar of soap. And now you can see that really pretty drop swirl that we did. But don't worry, I'll cut them all for you so you can see all the different patterns that we made with our soap. Gonna get it lined up, because again, I like to have all of my bars nice and uniform. Here's another one. Oh, it almost looks like a heart. Like that. Another thing I do if you're using a cheese cutter is I always try to cut off, um, I mean wipe off the uh, wire in between slices because it can make like little drag marks if you don't. That one's really cool, I like the like polka dotted look. That is one thing I love about the drop swirl. You never know what it's gonna look like until you cut into it. But it always makes such a pretty pattern. That one's pretty. I'm gonna keep cutting all of these, but I really hope that you enjoyed this video. I am so thankful again for the library that they reached out to me and asked me to make this. I hope that you make your own Harry Potter inspired soap. If you do, I would love to see it so you can uh, share it. I have a Facebook page here on Facebook. It is um, the Soapy Cauldron Shop. So if you do, make sure you tag me in it so I can see your awesome creations. I'm also on Instagram at the Soapy Cauldron Shop. And then if you wanna get any of your very own Harry Potter inspired soaps that I make, I have an Etsy shop. And again, that is the Soapy Cauldron Shop. So anything you want related to Harry Potter soap, I would be happy to see it, first of all. And then also if you want one of mine, or if you want one of these Polyjuice Potion inspired bars of soap, reach out to me and let me know. We're gonna cut one more and then we're gonna have 10 full bars of soap. And before I go, I wanted to let you know, this is now soap. However, it does need to cure for about four to six weeks. And what that does is it makes sure all the moisture is out of the bar and it allows for your bar to be nice and last a very long time. So I just cut those in half. But that is it. All of our soap has been cut. Everything has been made and done. I'm gonna go set it up. I have curing racks so that it just sits and lets it all, uh, all the moisture evaporate out of. But yeah. That's what we made. Thanks again for watching, and I hope that soon COVID goes away and we can meet together in person. But until then, thanks for joining me.